Hi everyone, it's Rio CloudSync. In today's session, my focus will be to provide you an update regarding token protection within conditional access policies. I'm a global administrator and I've accessed the Microsoft Entra Admin Center by navigating to entra.microsoft.com, of which I'm going to navigate to protection on the left hand side and select conditional access. This will take me to the conditional access overview dashboard. I, will, I have two options to either create a new policy from custom or create a new policy from template. Creation of new policy from template has just transitioned from public preview to global availability, i.e. GA. If I was to select create new policy, this will take me to, to the conditional access uh, blade in which I can create a policy and uh, deploy this to my organization. Uh, to either protect identities, um, devices, or applications. I have a few options in terms of uh, assignment, uh, destination, i.e. target resource, um, conditions to satisfy, maybe required device to be marked as compliant, um, as well as my uh, access controls from grant to session. We're solely focusing on session today. Um, which is require token protection for signing. It is still currently public uh, in public preview. And I did create a video and upload a video uh, regarding the creation of conditional access policies and to get to the stage of deployment. Um, this video, uh, the purpose of this video anyway, is to provide you an update on token protection um, and uh, of which to provide you a bigger impact in terms of why we're deploying this. Um, how it benefits you as an administrator as well as an end user, okay? So since February 2023, Microsoft, um, this is this is public knowledge, this is analytics um, online. Um, they've identified 60,000 plus replay attacks, okay? Since February 2023, of which fractors have either been able to bypass multi-factor authentication, so that two-layer approach to security, um, as well as bypass um, traditional conditional access policies uh, within the Entra admin console. How are they doing this? Well, they're, they're adversing in the middle um, of the token workflow. They're, they're that intermediary between the workflow. So they're stealing not just the key, uh, the key, but the, the access token as well. So the bearer token. Um, they are a malicious fractor, so they will laterally move across the organization. That it's not just dependent if it's a cloud workload, it can be an on-premise workload as well. If you do have that that hybrid approach, they can laterally uh, move from that one entity uh, to several entities. Um, and with that, if those entities do have the, the role of either global administrator or um, owner for an Azure plan or Azure subscription, they can start to create resources of which to either consume consume uh, compute, uh, to either crypto mine, um, or to uh, extract data from the organization and expose that to the public domain. Uh, there's also other options uh, a fractor can take, um, maybe um, uh, inject some malware on the physical device or endpoint itself. Um, and extraction of logs uh, to be to be able to gain visibility over the uh, token itself. Um, so the update, the updates per se. Um, Microsoft documentation at the moment um, says B two B users uh, are not supported. Uh, I can now confirm uh, B two B users are supported uh, within the use of required token protection for sign in. So if you were to select users and target the uh, the, the, the specific users, um, i.e. guest or external users, um, this would now be supported for required token protection. Um, however, there are some uh, caveats to that. Uh, they must be on a device registered on the uh, the home tenant or home directory itself. Um, it's subject to normal cross-tenant access controls, i.e. external uh, collaboration settings, um, as well as it assumes you trust the, the guest device registration. With that, that's, that's the update for token protection. There will also be a, um, uh, an expansion on the applications you can target as well. That is to come. Um, no timeframes have been confirmed. Um, that will be published by Microsoft and Microsoft only. Um, the only other thing to uh, be aware of is the licensing implications. Uh, token protection does sit within the uh, Microsoft Entra IDP2 license now. 
um, that is published on the Microsoft documentation itself in the nice little purple notes. Okay, um, and with that, um, anything in Entra IDP one is, is still for um, uh, uh, g g general use of conditional access policies. Um, of course, with the Entra IDP two as well, you do get the identity protection side of it, which is the risk base. Um, and that's all you really need to take into account. Um, and when I do mention Entra IDP1 and P2, I do want people to get used to, to these uh, naming conventions. It's not Azure Active Directory Premium P1 anymore. It's not Azure Active Directory P2. And Azure, Act Azure Active Directory is um, Entra ID as of now. Um, but other than that, it was just a quick update for you guys. Um, any questions, uh, please do let me know. Thank you.